But I'd like to at least deserve mention, and this is something we haven't done, but with every album release, there was a uh, they were contractually obligated to make a, a release of the A and B side single. And really cool, again, this interaction, this informing between Lennon and McCartney, once again, for some reason, these two singles don't sound like Revolver. They sound like their own thing, just the way Penny Lane and Strawberry Fields don't necessarily sound like Sgt. Pepper. They sound closer, but uh, these two songs are similar, but one's Lennon, one's McCartney. Okay, so what do we got? We got uh, Paperback Rider and Rain. Paperback Rider, another super cool lick. I think McCartney wrote this song just because of that. Yeah, it's just on an A7, dear sir. bluesy thing going between the A and the D chord, one and four. Nothing really amazing about this song. In fact, some of the critics thought it was just a kind of throw-off song. Yeah. I uh, always have liked this song, though. I, I've always liked it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it, there's, you know, even in a bad Beatles song, there's, you've got to find some merit somewhere. I mean, there, yeah. there's always something that's, that's a nice little chunk of something. Um, the harmonies in this are ridiculously good. <coughs> I like the harmonies, and, and there was a, there's something about the rhythm on this that's just very, uh, you know, it immediately catches the ear. Yeah, yeah. So. I remember when I heard the song as a kid the first time, and I thought it was the cool, oh, coolest thing, yeah. you know. I actually have the official paperback, paperback writer tie. Oh, dude. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> and so we have da, 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 second verse, da, 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 a week or two. What that is, it's just um, A to D. Chord-wise, this is a fairly simple song. Very, very simple. <laughs> and instead of an E7, he suspends the fourth. Instead of... Right. And it doesn't resolve it there, which is... I think they were doing a lot of the stuff with suspensions, too. Oh. Uh, what they're going for is really droney, droney kind of sound in a lot of this stuff, you know? Mm. Um, well, this other song brings it up, Rain. Rain again. Very much. And, uh, yeah, yeah, this whole droney thing was going on, like, you know, in, in imitation of that kind of Indian music thing. Mm -hmm. But they were constantly searching for these sensual sounds, like uh, uh, like Harrison befriended uh, Roger McGuinn, cause, and they talked about the 12-string guitar sound, which Harrison began to use back in Rubber Soul and oh. stuff like that. But this is when he got a Stratocaster, and he no noticed more sonic possibilities here. Uh, in any case, Rain, um, the McCartney bass line, uh, you know, it's a little too loud for a pop record, but it was so good, it was so delicious, that got to be there, you know. Mm -hmm. And that was in the days, man. McCartney was the first guy to, to play bass like it was a, um, like a melodic instrument, basically. And uh, he didn't play it like a lead guitar, but he played it like a melody instrument. Yeah. And... Uh, after that, all the bases follow. Huh. You know, once again, you know, if the Beatles had set a precedent. Suddenly, all the bass players were wanted that McCartney sound. Mm -hmm. You know, over and over and over and over again, these things. The Beatles would set a precedent. The bands would take it. You know, yeah. over and over. All right, so uh, one, four, five progression. right yeah right and the reason being you get that really kind of drone sound. Right? they were going for that that was the texture of the times it was like the paisley version of music yeah. you know so um Yeah, what you do is um, suspension. in a chord, and this 
this is again well we'll see if we can instruct laymen who don't know about music theory but a chord is constructed of three elements a root a fifth and a third now it's the third that gives you the soul of the chord in other words if i have a root and a fifth i don't know if this chord is happy or sad yet until i get the third if i get a major third it's happy if i get a minor third and in fact, one of the Beatles songs plays with that. You know the song? You know if you break. Yeah, that. Right, right. Yeah. All right, so again, playing with major minor. But the point here is that if we don't have a third in the chord, we don't know if it's happy or sad yet. So what happens with a suspension is that you take the third and you raise it a half step, which is not a third anymore, it's something called a fourth. And this that's the name, the suspended fourth. It creates a suspension that you want to drop to either major or minor, because if you're in a minor key, you can suspend the minor as well. Right? But you don't know until it's revealed. And that's a trick they use a lot. Um, like, say you write a song in a minor key. And then, all of a sudden you go to major as a surprise. Uh -huh. All right. All right, so, uh, yeah. Uh, Rain, I don't mind. And in fact, I've just read a little story about Lennon. Uh, when he, he laid these tracks down in the studio, he went back home, and this is the days, of course, of magnetic reel-to-reel -reel tape, mm -hmm. and he went back home to play it for himself, and he was probably wildly stoned, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, he accidentally uh, threaded the tape backwards, so he's listening to it in reverse, mm -hmm. and he loved the sound of it. He, he said it sounded like people were, I forgot what he said, something to the effect of people were speaking some other language. I forget what language he said, but... Mm -hmm. uh, he went back to Martin and said, you know, I, I love the reverse sound so much, I, I almost want to do the entire song backwards. But of course, that was impractical. So they added the, some of the reverse parts into it in the later part of the song. What happens, uh, is it in the chorus that has, has uh, a, a different rhythm going on between vocal and instruments? There's a, a rain, bum, 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 bum. Hey. Oh, all right. Thank yeah. I guess yeah, that's good. Yeah. So we have this. Uh, boom, boom, boom. That's what you're talking about. What it is is quarter note triplets, and it almost sounds like it's moving into a waltz. One, two, three. Right. One, but it doesn't quite do that because you could, you could, you could go like. Uh, like one, two, three, one, two, three. That feels like a waltz, right. you know. And actually, in some of these songs, you know, Lennon does that. He goes into a, a full-out waltz. In this case, it's not a full-out waltz because we still maintain the four, four, four to uh, slide in the rain. And you go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three one, yeah. against. Yeah. Da, 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 da. So it doesn't quite. If we got rid of the initial meter, then like it, it would sound safe. like this if if it really went into three, four. Uh, rain. Which they don't quite do. It's right. kind of like it's 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 the tension of putting the triplet against right. the quarter note. Okay, and I actually teach this in blues playing. I, I uh, do an exercise where I have me, my um, student when they're learning lead guitar. I'll I'll be doing like a steady blues type of thing and I tell them what I want you to do is take the top four notes of the pentatonic scale, play them very slowly and then start slowly speeding up in a kind of incline, right? So what happens is if, when they do that against this there are points where the, the time actually matches up for just a moment. It's like the old uh, oh. cliche of like a clock being right, a broken clock being right twice a day. Okay. In a sense like when you're slow, slowly speed up. But the idea here is something I call rhythmic dissonance. And this is something I don't teach in school yet again. But rhythmic dissonance is when you fight the tempo, the existing rhythm of the song. Mm -hmm. And you could do that in the blues. Like, uh, you know, I'm going along here. I don't know if I could demonstrate it without hearing another instrument. But so 
there's a, I'm staying right inside the rhythm. And then, uh, I, again, I, I went against the rhythmic boundaries and then fell back in. It's just like dissonance and harmony. You go against, you create tension, and then you come back and create resolution. That's one of those things where you can tell the superior player from the raggedy player. Because the superior player can play those things and make those sound fine. But there's there's other players where it just becomes kind of, it's sharp, it, it's a little off, mm -hmm. and and, yeah. a, and the fingering is a little sloppy. Right, right. Something like right. that. Sure, sure, you can tell right away. One thing that's particularly pleasing to me is when I teach students, I had one student that actually listened to my concept, like listened to me and actually did my concept of rhythmic dissonance. It made him sound that much more professional. We're talking about like a 16-year-old kid, mm -hmm. but he sounded like a real blues player when he started doing that. You know, he took all my tips about the blues and used them, and he sounds. This guy, kid, sounds like he could step up and open my heart really? and bells. And, you know. Oh, well, man. so okay, so now have we wrapped up Revolver? I think we've got Revolver. I mean, we did Taxman, Eleanor B. I'm only sleeping. Love to you. I kind of skip because I just don't like the song. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to these I'd like to these deserve mention and this is something we haven't done but with every album release there was a uh, they were contractually obligated to make a, a release of the A and B side single and really cool again this interaction this informing between Lennon and McCartney once again for some reason these two singles don't sound like Revolver they sound like their own thing. Just the way Penny Lane and Strawberry Fields don't necessarily sound like Sgt. Pepper. They sound closer, but uh, these two songs are similar, mm -hmm. but one's Lennon, one's McCartney. Okay, so what do we got? We got uh, Paperback Writer and Rain. Paperback Writer, another super cool lick. I think McCartney wrote this song just because of that. Just start an A70 or so. It took me to ride Will you take a look? It's not a trouble, but I met these there. And I'll need a break in a whole of you. Paperback writer. Paperback writer. So, what we have is kind of a bluesy thing going mm -hmm. between the A and the D chord, one and four. Nothing really amazing about the song. In fact, some of the critics thought it was just a kind of throw off song. Yeah. I always have liked this song, though. I've, I've always liked it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it, there's, you know, even in a bad Beatles song, there's, you've got to find some merit somewhere. I mean, there, yeah. there's always something that's that's a nice little chunk of something. But I'd like to at least deserve mention, and this is something we haven't done, but with every album release, there was a, uh, they were contractually obligated to make a, a release of well, the A and B side single. And really cool, again, this interaction, this informing between Lennon and McCartney, once again, for some reason, these two singles don't sound like Revolver. They sound like their own thing. Just the way Penny Lane and Strawberry Fields don't necessarily sound like Sgt. Pepper. They sound closer, but uh, these two songs are similar, but one's Lennon, one's McCartney. Okay, so what do we got? We got uh, Paperback Writer and Rain. Paperback Writer, another super cool lick. I think McCartney wrote this song just because of that. It's just on an A70 or so. bluesy thing going between the A and the D chord, one and four. Nothing really amazing about the song. In fact, some of the critics thought it was just a kind of throw-off song. Yeah. I uh, always have liked this song, though. I, I've always liked it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it, there's, you know, even in a bad Beatles song, there's, you've got to find some merit somewhere. I mean, there, yeah. there's always something that's, that's a nice little chunk of something. Um, the harmonies in this are ridiculously good. <coughs> I like the harmonies, and, and there was a, there's something about the rhythm on this that's just very, uh, you know, it immediately catches the ear. Yeah, yeah. So. I remember when I heard the song as a kid the first time, and I thought it was the cool, oh, coolest thing, yeah. you know. I actually have the official paperback, paperback writer tie. Oh, dude. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> and so we have da, 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 second verse. Da, 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 What that 
is it's just um, A to D. Chord wise, this is a fairly simple song. Very, very simple. <laughs> and instead of an E7, he suspends the fourth. Instead of. Right. We get. And it doesn't resolve it there, which is. I think they were doing a lot of the stuff with suspensions, too. Oh. 